Hi everybody, hope you're well. Um, this morning I had a question which was to do with, well, how do you breed better horses? So in this regard, I'm going to be talking about GP. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of ideas on how to do that. Now say, for example, you go in to, let's say we're going to the horses here, and you decide that you want to breed one of these, okay? And you pick one, and just for the sake of argument, we'll pick Frisian, okay? Um, you want to make sure you look on the genetics for purebred. So when you've done that, and you've you've wanted to pick Frisian, but you can pick any breed you want, and then you see what genetic value the top horse is of. So you can see here it's one thousand six hundred thirty-seven. Different servers that will be different. You need to go check. So basically, go to rankings, go to horses, genetics, purebred, and then click on something that you want to have a look. It might be unicorns that you want to breed. Um, and you just need to do the exact same thing. So genetics for unicorns, and then pick a breed in there. So, um, so we've seen the Frisian, okay, for this example. Um, there's the unicorn Frisians as well. So six six one. But we're gonna go in with irregular ones for this. Okay, so one six three four, or sorry, three seven. So what you could do is some of those teams might be selling. So you could go in to the team, see what they're selling. You could look through the different players and see if any of them are selling anything. Um, check the sales. Soon you now got a rough idea of what um, the top GP is. Obviously you're not going to get the shop to be. Um, top teams do not sell out their best genetic um, unless it's a gelding. So let's try over 1000 for this because I think we should be able to get. So yeah, as you can see there's plenty of horses here with over 1000. So let's try 1100. And there right, we've got one that's 1200. So will go up again and just keep narrowing down until you can see so there's a 1390 so now we've narrowed it down and there's only one horse in the sales as high as that so um, obviously you want to go in and check that it's purebred obviously you can set it to make sure that it's purebred this one isn't purebred as you can see so you obviously want to be very careful of that um, and this is why sometimes it's always better to set it. So here's the purebred thing. This is this little star here. So click that. And we'll have to obviously set that down a bit. So we'll go back to 1,200. So yeah, there's plenty of purebreds here. So then you would pick maybe one. You might choose to pick a filly or you might choose to pick a colt, whatever. But you're going to obviously need at least one. So say, for example, we bought one of these. The next thing we could possibly do is, once we have that horse, and I'm just going to use one of my regular Frisians that I have for this example, I'm not going to actually go in and buy one. Um, let's see if I have a mare here. Okay, this isn't a mare. Nope. Hold on, I'll see if I can find it a bit quicker. Just using the, the search. So, female. Okay. <clears throat> so... Say, for example, we bought this and it's 1,200 GP. We can go to cover my mare. So we go into the sales and we know that we want a purebred. And we know we want it to be a Frisian. And we'll just black covers. So initially have a look there. Now, obviously, you might just want to go for one, you know, 100 blop. And that's probably the best thing to do. But just to get a rough idea of what is out there. So there's a decent one there. Um, so we'll go with 100 and then we'll have a look at the GP. So we know that we can get at least that much. So there's two possible styles. So we could then cover our mare with that. And then we're starting with a nice high fold to work with. Now that's one of the ways to do it, okay? So we could cover our, you know, 1,200 GP mare with one of these stallions. And that would get us starting off at the top possible from public sales. Now you can do it this way if you want. If you don't want to do it this way, the other thing to do is to start from the very, very beginning. And um, some people do this and some people don't. Um, it's basically when you're starting from foundation level. So foundation is anything that has Giga or Aranus parents. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can... If you don't know what one of those is, I'm going to see if I can 
find it to show you. So just put that onto at least one there. Okay, I think this one. All right. No, that's a disappeared horse. It's not even purebred. All right. No, well, actually, I'll show you a different. I'll show you a different horse, which I know is Gigas and Aramis' parents. So here you go. Here's one with his parents. Um, <clears throat> where's that information? On the tree. There we go. So you could start from one of these. Um, and the benefit of doing that is it's your own work completely. You've started from scratch and you might find that's more rewarding for you if you don't want to use the top um, things you can buy from sales. Don't go to approach don't go and approach a top group and expect them to sell you over above their public sales because they'll tell you where to go. They will probably tell you not a chance. Um, you could go to them and ask them do they sell, you know, what is the highest GP they sell publicly? And they're probably more willing. Or maybe what's the highest cover public coverings they sell, but don't ask them to sell above that because chances are they will not do it, okay? Because obviously you're trying to compete against them and they're not going to just say, sure, take our top GP. They're not going to do it, okay? Um, so those are some of the ways you could do it. Um, but always try to take into consideration your budget. Um, you know, and this is just for starting off. I mean, obviously, you're now going to have to be able to block your horses and continue. Now, I did in another video, pair breeding and back breeding. You can have a look at that. That's how the, um, once you've actually got your horses and you've got your foal out of those two horses or your two foals, what you would maybe then do to continue improving your horses. And obviously, you need to make sure you've blocked those correctly and the blop's sufficient because um, anything, a horse with negative blop is going to give you foals with a lower GP. Horse with positive blop is going to give you a horse that produces foals that are more likely to be higher in genetic potential than the mare. And the other thing to bear in mind, if you breed from 350, based on whatever server you're on, the gains will be larger. So if I breed from two 350 foundations like this, um, I would get maybe a much larger gain than I would if I was breeding the very, very top horses in the game. I mean, in past times when I bred some of the top horses in the game, I have actually got gains of zero. 0. 0.0 so no gain whatsoever um the gains for lower gp horses are much higher so if maybe you think i can't compete maybe if you think in your head i can't compete with people who are breeding the top 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 you know really late horses but i could maybe take a breed that's a lower gp and work that and make it better then you actually would benefit from better gains okay because whatever gp the top horses on the game are they actually get very very low gains i'll maybe go and do that a video on that but basically the gains are super super tiny so maybe 0 0.10 or 0 0.15 overall Whereas if you're breeding from maybe 400 GP or 350, you might be getting 6 GP, 15 GP gain per foal, okay? So per generation, basically. So it might be more worth your time to go and do that. Um, just to go in, have a look, see what you're passionate about. Don't go and just pick the, you know, the highest GP foal you can get your hands on if it's not what your passion's in. You'll do better working on what you love to do, okay? If you just go with a crowd and it isn't really your thing, you'll find yourself bored after a while. Do find what is your passion. Some people like to do NIB breeding. That's how I personally started. Um, and I'll maybe do a video on it. Basically, NIB breeding is non-inbred breeding. Um, it takes quite a lot of organisation, but it can be quite rewarding. Um, and if you want to breed unicorns, breed unicorns or donkeys or whatever you want to do just make sure it's right for you okay guys i hope that was helpful and i hope you had a lovely day and bye bye